coming from the rack store With this back in the Mac in the back flow Let's go, chillin' with raccoons by the back door Take all so you can stake more All I wanna do is making door right But I found this crew and doing alright We wreck, will bitch, ready to fight So many raccoons ready for the boss life I might fly high like a kite, right? But always ready for a shite for the right price Raccoon supply has the right price Giving you respect if it's likewise So I'm buying all the mean guys with the clean heart Read between lies, laser bean through lean eyes Slurry or with clean lies, trash mouth mean smile Be wise, NFT wise, fuck with these guys It's the rack lab from the back lab Hundred NFTs in my backpack Crazy rack lab from the stash app Rack will take a lead in this haystack <laughs> And it's fucking, what time is it? Well, we don't give a fuck, we work in all time zones. But it is Wednesday, the fucking 24th of May, 2023. And this is your US of A, Cosmos Crypto fucking breakfast show. Where we sort all you nerds out with what's fucking going on in the industry. I mean, you just want to know what's going on? This is where you come to fucking chew the fat, shoot the shit, listen to some cool projects. Without all of that benign bollocks that we have to listen to on. Can you tell me a little bit about your project? Fuck off, dude, man. Let's get out of the proper conversation. So we have joining us tonight. We have a special co-host. We have Mr. Don there as a co-host. Uh, it's all about the wreck raffle tonight. The dropping in two days, guys. The minting in two days. Giga size fucking prizes. There's a lot of excitement. A lot of but. We've also been joined, I'm going to say this out loud, we are a gaming project, that's our roots, and we did invite our dev, uh, Mull, and he is our back-end dev, the, you know, the main smart contract dev, uh, and he's, he loves anything to do with raffles, uh, gaming, gamification, uh, randomness, you name it, our Moll's fucking into it. So he might just be hanging back and listening in, uh, he might want to come up early as a speaker. He, he might jump in with a question. It's up to him. Uh, but I'm dead excited. Thank you, Moll, for coming in. You are strong, uh, you know, educational, informational support, uh, as well as moral support. So I do appreciate it. But without further ado, I'm going to go to Don and say, Mr. Don, do you want to do the Rack FM introduction to Rec Raffle? Like, I'm not going to get into Rick Raffle to do his introduction. I'm going to say, Don, introduce the crew uh, to Rick Raffle. Tell, tell, give us, give us, are, are you involved? Are you just in love with the project? Are you, are you, are you a gambling Dijon motherfucker? What's going on, Don? So, <laughs> good question. So me, um, it was, it, Rick Raffle was my idea after a bunch of people got wrecked in Celsius. So uh, I wanted trying to think of ways to make people whole but obviously you can't do that for everyone um so we came up with a kind of uh randomized fair way to to do so because uh yeah the, there's 40 east that are going for the prizes and uh we got the amazing dev fabian at, uh, on the Rec Raffle account right now, he's uh, masterminding all the media campaign and uh, spark contracts, and uh, yeah, he really uh, wraps everything together. So, Don, this is this. Is, you say this is like a way of giving back, do you? Well, yeah, yeah uh, we're gonna. Someone's gonna get life changing money. So, you know, so. And that inspires you. That inspires you to like get out of bed on the morning. You're like, someone is going to change someone's fucking life, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, uh, kind of like what I've been thinking about lately since we're coming up to the min. Because uh, first, first place gets 32 ETH. And if you were, I, I don't know what the winner will do with that, but if you were to, in theory, stake that and just keep it as a passive revenue, uh, profit, like a stream of income then oh, of course do, of course yeah it, you you could be rich within a year or two 
Well, whenever Ethereum explodes, you know. But you mean when it hits ten grand, which it's gone to? Absolutely. Probably by the probably by the end of twenty twenty five. Probably by the end of the next bull. Uh, right, we're gonna get into Fabian Lords. So before we do, let's take the opportunity just to say good morning to Mol. Uh, Mol's jumped up. Uh, this is our dev guys. Uh, hello there, Mol. How are you doing, son? All right. Hey, what's up, guys? Doing fine. Pretty happy to jump on space today. It's been a while, and uh, very happy to hear about uh, Rick Raffle and uh, what Don has to say. So very excited to be here. Uh, Mol, just so like obviously Fabian and stuff, you know, they might not be aware uh, of, of you guys, etc. So Mol, uh, we did a randomness summit uh, the other month, uh, but you've got a lot of like uh, background uh, in AI, but particularly in uh, like applied like randomness and you've done a lot of like uh, research work at universities and stuff, right? Yeah, so uh, just to give a, a bit of a heads up, so basically I, I have a background uh in like applied mathematics and basically in probability as well. And then I did uh, a master's after that uh, in machine learning, but uh, for everyone who knows about that, like machine learning, deep learning, AI, it's, it's all like interwined, let's say. But like at the end of the day, like it's a lot of math and a lot of probability. So that's why uh, I really like this. And I also like did some research in deep learning. And I also worked in the industry of doing like Mostly like financial stuff and probability. So that I'm a bit of a geek, but uh, <laughs> I really enjoy like doing an application with math and probability, let's say. Right. Without further ado, uh, let's th thanks for that, Mo. Without further ado, let's say hello to Fabian. And Fabian, I hope you don't mind that I've invited Mo in part of the conversation. But uh, you all right, Fabian? Yeah. What's up, everyone? Thank you so much for firstly having us on the show today. I appreciate it. Um, and Thanks for keeping track of, of where we're at and where we're in terms of having a de another developer, absolutely no problem. Uh, also often makes it easier to explain con concepts. Um, so yeah, shoot away. Ask me wh whatever you would like. First thing I would say is that's a sexy fucking South African accent. That, I mean, I would think that would be Durban weird. And I would think you would probably be from uh, Scottish or Welsh uh, descent with that accent. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Am I, am I I'm about I'm about to break your heart. Um, so yes, I'm from it. South Africa. Um, I am from Johannesburg, of gold, uh, the business capital of South Africa, or whatever you could call it. Um, and then I am actually half Israeli and half Italian. Uh, unfortunately, no English or Scottish or any type of of blood away from that. Wow, I got that one wrong, didn't I? I mean, I fucked that right up. You couldn't get any worse. <laughs> I, I normally, I normally do try to like go. No, but you know something. You sound the double of my friend Nick uh, from Durban. Like, like, literally, I could uh, put like close my eyes, and you two guys could just be sounding the same in front of me. So I was like, I wonder if I go. Uh, Wrecked. You're gonna laugh at this. Uh, last week. I actually got that a woman was like from Zimbabwe, but grew up in South Africa, but then like moved to America after. Like that's a pretty hardcore. Like I, I was like, you've got South African, but it's not like is it Zimbabwe? Like, and then you moved abroad, and she's like, no way. I nailed it, but not yours anyway. I'm, <laughs> close, 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 but no cigar, buddy. I'm one for two. I'm one for two on that one. Anyway, uh, Fabian, uh, like I say, I hope you don't mind me asking them all. I know I didn't message you guys to say I was bringing the dev in, but he's part of the furniture, he's part of the family. Uh, all good. But first up, dude, you're 48 hours away from your mint. How fucking buzzing are you? How excited are you right now? No, I, I'm definitely quite excited. Um, you know, I personally own South Africa's largest Web3 digital agency. Um, and unfortunately, day to day, I deal with normal retainers and, and sort of quoting. And Rick Raffle has been, uh, I think, not only a, a fun project for us, but a cool bonding moment for me and Don. I, I didn't know Don nine months ago, um, and we were able to unite. But like Don said, I'm very excited to, to one, see um, you know, what people do with the rewards. 
Uh, two, I'm exceptionally excited to see who can make it through the paper hand stage. Because um, I'm sure, as you know, I don't know if you've maybe picked it up. We've been very uh, hint orientated with this stuff. But if you do own uh, a Genesis 1 Rect Raffle Pass, you are entitled to the uh, profit share of whatever application we build next. Um, and that is the true utility. You get the raffle. Um, and then you you get part of that profit share from there out. So to put it in one nice robust sentence, I'm fucking pumped, bro. Um, it's been nine months of hard graft, and I'm quite excited to actually hang out with our community and, and sort of bond and get building on, on some cooler stuff. Eh? Well, bro, there's a few things I want to ask about uh, Wrecked, uh, Wrecked Raffle and maybe the people uh, who jump in, who, who don't know maybe, et cetera. They might be unaware of the premise or the concept. However, dude, and I don't. We don't normally do this kind of like background shit, but like it's, sometimes we realize it's oh okay, it's important and maybe you know sense where this guy's come from, etc. Uh, dude, uh, Don mentioned that you were like I think you were doing obviously the smart contracts, but then he said you were like doing the marketing. Uh, like, are you a jack of all trades in the project or what? Have you been like doing everything like yourself or what? Yeah, so so we we actually have a team of three here at Rekt, um, which is supported by my company, uh, which is a digital a full functioning digital agency, normal nine to five, um, and yeah, every everything you see and touch, I built the smart contract, I make all the artworks, um, anything and everything, I do all the copy, um, I built the website as well, so you know I'm very lucky, and I think that's a you know big uh, sort of spotlight onto our utility where we differ. Uh, from everyone else is that we actually have a functional company feeding into this. Um, you know, so for a lot of people and, and no discredit to any other projects or organizations, you know, they have to outsource everything. Uh, where for us, it's it's a lot easier. You know, we have a phone call, or me and Don WhatsApp each other and we agree upon something and then I can create a finished product uh, within one or two days. So yes, we, we've handled everything you see in the Rect ecosystem is is made by the three main people in Rekt, either Don, myself, or James, which is the third developer. Oh, dude, you're right up our street. You're right our fucking sword, because we've only got two devs, a front end and a back end, and they've done everything themselves. We like small, compact, like cellular teams. These big fucking teams with all this bloat and waste of money, dude, it's embarrassing. Like crypto, that's not what crypto is about these days. That's like 2020, 2020, we're on one, right? You guys Whoa. now, yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I agree with that um, because, you know, in, in reality, you know, these big teams come with, with big budgets and huge spends. And if, if you've ever done real business, real successful business, you understand that startups are made from the grit underneath your fingernails. There are no big budgets. There are no, there's only ambition and passion to keep pushing on. And it's it's been a huge beneficial thing for us because we're fully in control of everything. Um, you know, we have a direct effect. So I, I couldn't agree more. Sorry for interrupting you there. No, you're all right, dude. You're fine. I oh, didn't interrupt me. I'm a player, man. Uh, did do you have to raise any money or anything? Uh, I, I didn't want to pry into your business, but we always ask about raises or VCs. Are you guys in the clear? So, so we, we are actually very fortunate enough and, and big shout out to Don. When, when we originally had this uh, conversation, we discussed, you know, how can we make our community and, you know, future minters feel comfortable. So if you pop onto our website or even on our Twitter, you can find a link to our treasury wallet. Everything in this program so far in terms of the rewards um, has been done by Don. Don has put that 40 ETH that's sitting in the treasury wallet. That is Don's 40 ETH uh, that he's personally going to give away to to obviously make people whole. And then in terms of, you know, our side and getting budget for, for whatever, you know, we're building, like I said, you know, myself, Don and James are all partners here. So we don't actually work on a budget. I just build it, bro. Um, and that's the project we're working towards. Not all fucking, not all heroes wear capes, right? Right? Not, not at all, all you know. <laughs> yeah, all, I tell you what, fucking Don's a cracker. Like I've got to say, like he's uh, he's he, in crypto. You you come across these people, right? You come across many, many people, and you get like a bad taste in your mouth from many of them. Uh, however, there's people down in this room I can spot, like like founders and stuff. I'm going to bring up Risby for one, Chris for another. Like we know the fucking people it takes to be able to like do what you guys are doing. 
you know, they, they, like we say, this small, like not insular, but a cellular team, I'm going to kind of say, right? Like, man, this is the kind of project we're talking about. So I'm dying to get mull in for the randomness, et cetera, et cetera. Fabian, can you give us the, the basic promise, uh, premise? I know you've said Don's thrown 48 in, but like, right, you've, you, you've got an NFT coming out. That NFT is going to be like tie to something. One of the NFTs will be winning. Can you just get like, I think you're explaining to my mother who's 71 and thick as shit, you know? Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you, bro. Um, so it's very simple. And I'm just going to explain also the development system, like decisions uh, for Mole. So he gets a, a little bit of an understanding. So if, if you look at Rick Raffles contract, I'll just go through that and then I'll, I'll, I'll explain it granularly. So if you look at uh, Rick Raffles NFT contract, you'll see it's a very simple contract. It's, it's not complicated. It is optimized. Um, you know, in order to manage gas, and there are a few fail safes there, uh, just to ensure that that our community is safe. But we we took a very very simple and transparent route um, on purpose. Initially, the contract was linked to Chainlink, um, and I'm sure Mal, if you if you've worked with Chainlink before, you understand that Chainlink is great at randomizing numbers and data sets, um, especially if you use sort of their API keys correctly. So initially, we were going to create a contract, um, you know, that automatically linked up to Chainlink, and then would give you the number of the reward. But with that being said, after a little bit of review, we, we went for a much more manual process. So you'll see the contract in Fidelity is very, very simple. It's not a complicated uh, smart contract. But what will simply happen, okay, is let's say it's minting day, it's Friday. Get your MetaMask open or whatever wallet you would like. You mint your ticket, okay? Once you mint your ticket, you verify your asset in the Discord. Once your asset has been verified in the Discord, you'll get access to a private section of the Discord where um, obviously holders and other people will, will be present that, that are necessary, like developers and moderators. Okay, From there, there's about a two-week cooldown period. So we've explained to, to our you know, minters that we've done that on purpose to ensure that the paper hands have their fun. If they're there to make their 0.01 ETH, go for it. But you are going to lose out on the raffle. And uh, that's unfortunately not my fault. But with that being said, the, what the process will be is after you're minting, you'll be put into this private Discord. We will obviously communicate with you through there. Approximately two weeks after mint, we will be hosting a live stage in Discord as well as streaming it to Twitter at the same time. We would obviously prefer our users to be in our Discord at that time. And we will physically live on screen do the draw. Um, and that will be validated by... Uh, sort of another smaller smart contract that shows you the randomization. So it will create a TNX uh, transaction for for the draw. And then that contract itself will create three numbers. We don't have any control over that. Um, we absolutely are just, you know what I mean, putting in the function and then sending it off. Where we've also been smart and, again, very granular approach is we want to be held accountable. We're not really afraid to be held accountable. So this will happen live on stage. You will get your prize money there and then in front of everyone else that's waiting to see if their number got true. And from there, you will get your ticket. Once you get your ticket and the winnings is done, we have another two weeks, I would be honest with you, and say more likely a month, uh, where we would like to hang out with our community, talk, populate, speak about ideas, allow the paper hands again to do what they need to do. And then from there, there will be another validation process for voting. Okay, so now once you hold a Genesis 1 ticket, you're entitled to vote. And based off the communications and the conversations happening within our community, we will bring forward 10 ideas, okay, whether it be a casino whether it be a token, whether it's an app that cleans up the dust in your wallet, whatever it may be, you have the power to vote on it. Once that vote is cast, obviously through a smart contract, it's set in stone. From there, we will go ahead and develop that concept for the community to use. And the community is entitled to a profit share based upon the usage of that. Whether, you know, if it's a cons casino, they'd get a percentage of the transaction fees. If it's a, for example, swapping DAP, they'd get a bit of the slippage. So that is essentially the concept. The raffle is the, is the motivator. It's the carrot that gets you in the door. 
But stage two, where we cast the vote and build the actual application, is what you want to hold the ticket for. Because remember, we have four draws. Okay, we have Genesis one to four. So we're giving away another 40 ETH in a couple of months, and that will continue as we go along. But if you don't hold the Genesis 1 pass, you're not part of the utility community. And we, we've only hinted at this. I don't want to push this in people's faces. It's for the people that actually listened to the chats, read the messages, saw the hints. Um, and that's essentially how the process would work. I, I hope I didn't miss anything there. Oh, this is just the fucking time for Mull to be coming in here. He's been listening. He's like, I'd offer a five. Mull, what do you think of the, the premise there, the, the outline? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I really like it because uh, like a bit more than a year ago, it's something very similar that we did. Like the idea that you just described is very similar to our project where the idea was to sell our NFTs and then our NFTs will make the people owner of a casino or a gaming slash gambling platform, so which is very similar. And I think it's a very good idea to do it because it's like if people are going to be able to gather some like of the revenues of the platform, exactly like you said, and I, I really like the idea. But uh, I, I would add like maybe one question when you discussed about like the chain link part and how you guys are going to do the randomness. So if I understood correctly, um, you guys are going to create like the seed and the random numbers from on-chain information. And these are then going to be sent into the drawer that's going to pick the three tickets, right? Yeah, something along those lines. So basically, we, we're going to use Chainlink to 100% to verify that we have no control over that. Because once the Chainlink contract is active and we, for example, um, action it, we, we have zero control over that process. So yes, your thinking is correct. Okay, that's great then. Because at the end of the day, just to make it very simple for, for everyone, like when, when you draw uh, some tickets in a lottery, you can imagine like that every ticket has the same probability of happening. So at the end of the day, you just need, it's, it's called a random uh, distribution. It's, it's, it's just very simple. You can imagine that each ticket has the same probability. And then you, you just draw three tickets from there. You just need like the randomness from Chainlink and that's it. And that's exactly what you're doing. It's, it's very simple. It's, it gets a bit tricky when you're trying uh, other stuff, but that's well, how it should be done. Exactly, exactly. And, and like I said to you when I was explaining this, we did take a very granular approach. You know, within the first months of developing the contracts and stuff, we got to the point where we felt like we were overcomplicating the system. And I feel like less steps promotes transparency in our process, which a lot of people want. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm basically on the same page as you, bro. We took that as a design decision to make it a bit simpler. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's part, it's part of the thing, you know, it's the same thing when we started us, we started with the, with a lottery and then we ended up having like many different games. But like you said, the, the best way to do it is always like you work the idea a lot and then you end up that the, like the, the main thing to draw the tickets or the main thing to do the randomness is just just a few lines of code it's very simple but like you have to work on it to actually find how you can make it simple for everyone to understand at the end of the day it's the most important thing having 100 percent like uh, transparency on chain though mall is that where the hard point comes in is that like if you were off chain you can do a lot of like other things that you can't do specifically on chain right yeah but still like for for us like in our case, like our code is like closed source, but like the, the new contacts that we're working on is going to have ver verifiable randomness. So that's that's something that's going to improve our contracts. But uh, as as of now, our contract are closed source. So the randomness that we create, we make sure that it's pretty random. Like we've tested it on chain. Like we, I, I don't want to the hijack the <laughs> this this call, but basically for us, like we have a hundred sided dice, and what we did is we had like maybe two two million simulations, and then close to one million simulations on chain, just to make sure that the randomness of the dice was uniform, because it's very similar to to a lottery ticket. You just have to make sure that every number is happen the number of time it should happen for let's say a hundred thousand times and stuff like that. So it's basically like stress testing. You're just saying basically like when you've got randomness like this, yeah, it's just basically like stress. To I remember you guys did ridiculous like simulations, right? 
Yeah, and it's it could be the same thing for a lottery ticket. So, for example, uh, Red Raffles have like uh, 3,333 uh, NFTs. But one person, what what one could do is basically simulate all the possible outcomes. So draw the prizes like 1 million, 10 million times and see if each ticket uh, comes out uh, as expected. So if you, you draw a million times, you, you need to make sure that the ticket each ticket have the same probability of happening, but you need to do a lot of simulation for this to happen, but that's basically it. The interesting thing is, and we'll go to Fabian here. Fabian, the interesting thing is, right, that there's so many people don't realize that they're like pure, like randomness, or I, but there's no such thing, allegedly, I think I was told on the last summit, but like people don't understand how big and how important like randomness is becoming uh, on the blockchain right now. It's like, it's becoming like, you know, omnipresent, right? And we just don't realize it. Yeah, you know, and that and that's why I was referring to Chainlink, because from from a development perspective on Ethereum, I'm gonna agree with Mo, we are limited um at this time. So that's why, you know, looking to other chains like Chainlink that, you know, have almost made it a science about the randomness. And it is, it is. It's a it's a little bit of a science. It everything is random, but only to a degree, like Mole says. You can if you're very, very smart and you have the power to simulate, you can figure it out. And that's why it's very important to use uh systems that are handling much, much bigger deals than us um to to sort of work through that. Oh, we've had the full, uh, my goodness, you don't even know what, want to know what API 3 was talking about with their randomness and hyper fucking pressure. What, oh, Jesus, Mole, that was mental. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that. And Chubby Baby, unless Don or Rec Raffle's going to say, get Chubby Baby up, dude, you're not coming up to talk about Pepe or any other shit. We're having a proper fucking show. So sit your ass down there, you little fucking hoe. Anyway, Don, I want to ask you about your uh, journey, my friend, right? With uh wrecked so like i mean i don't i know your story i, I know about the celsius you're fucking through 40 ethan i mean that's not a, like a you didn't just wake up in the morning and go i'm just gonna throw 40 ethan like i mean there must be something behind it you must have seen uh you must have seen qualities in people like fabian the team you, you know, Don, there has to be something that you where you wake up in the morning you go fuck it i'm gonna throw 40 ethan in this project we're gonna give it away I mean, talk me through that process. It like, what was your fucking mental process? Well, see, people people lost their whole life savings in Celsius, right? So, um, it, it wasn't that. Oh, but, but were you were you shill? I mean, were you shilling fucking Celsius? Like, why why should you give? Oh no, I wasn't shilling Celsius, should... but it's it's see over these months of uh, of all the spaces in the Celsius community, like we've all we've all grown and bonded, like pretty pretty largely if you will like uh yeah pretty pretty uniquely no no pretty uniquely yeah, yeah. there's probably never been a time in history where humans have been forged together over a financial situation like this online right it, yeah and it's so crazy because people that aren't involved in it directly uh like like you Fabian, whoever they all come and for some reason they stay so like th th it's the community has so much power. I just wanted to give back, you know. And uh, that was it, though, Don. It was that was it. It was just from like the bottom of your heart. You thought, let's do something. These guys can build, you know. Let's let's see what we can do. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's when I when I uh, bought because I had to buy some of the ETH. It, it was it was literally half the price it is now. <laughs> so over the time of building uh, Rex. It, it basically, yeah, it doubled in price. So, it's giving I was giving away forty thousand at first, basically, but now it's eighty thousand. I get you, bro. I I get you. I yeah. Uh, I want I want to know what you said. So right, okay. You, I, do you think you're gonna mint out straight away, Don, or what? What's the what's the pressure like? That's a good question. Um, see. Through all this too, um, I've uh, seemed to get a lot more uh, people in my DMs. <laughs> so uh, I, I actually do think we're gonna probably mint out within a couple of days. I would, I would assume, but 
some people, well, I mean, NFT, nobody's really buying NFTs right now. That's the only, that's the only thing that worries me a little bit. Fabian, you want to go? Yeah, I think just to to sort of concrete, um, you know, Don's points there. We we have a good core community, and I think we we confidently going to get to to eighty percent um, within that you know couple of weeks, like Don said. I do think with the current environment um, of NFTs and ETH and ordinals and all this other nonsense popping up here and there, um, you know, we're going to have to work a little bit for for the. Um, other 20 percent but i'm rather confident um you must understand that we're looking at this from the people we directly talk to who's in our private chats who's in our discord um you know so i assume with that type of volume being minted we can attract um a whole new load of people as well but yeah i'm sort of on the same page as don i think about two weeks uh max a month uh, max but uh, i'm more on the side of two weeks bro i'll tell you what you're talking about nfts no matter what people say, they're fucking never going out of fashion. Like, like there might be a little bit of a low period or whatever, like with a market, like a, a week or 10 days where volume might drop off. But holy fuck, dude, the minute the market turns around, NFTs pick up more than anything. Like, I'm in shock, me. I wish I'd played the NFT game long before I fucking did, right? Don't we all, brother? I mean, yeah, like, tell you, tell the truth, traditional crypto markets versus the NFT, is there even a conversation there? Because I don't think so. Well, I, I, can't build communities like we can. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I originally come from mining. So I've been mining since Ethereum Classic. Um, and yeah, like NFTs, have, they've definitely <laughs> weathered the storm, to put it nicely. Maybe we were talking about this the other day. Where, where, I mean, Moll's got some crazy ideas about what can happen. Like, Moll's convinced that we haven't even barely tapped the potential of what NFTs can actually do in uh, in the real world, right? Well, what about yourself? Have you got any, like, mad, like, visionary views of, of NFTs or what? Yeah, I think I think for me personally, I'm, I'm very excited, and I'm just going to say this bluntly, for the fuck boy stage to end. Um, you know, there, there's been a very sad theme where, you know, almost every program busts out and they blame the developer. Um, and, you know, personally, I'm seeing a lot more developers in my circle starting to, to actually build real, real solutions, real chains, real actual things. And I think once we, we get past the initial understanding, you know, the excitement of NFTs, we can realize that, you know, an NFT is as good as a as a an Amex if you wanted it to be. You know, it depends on the utility of your community. So, for me personally, I'm very excited to see NFTs being used in in large scale things like logistics. You know, a lot of people don't talk about NFTs can be used as uh, individual identifiers based on their metadata and what they carry with them. So, you know, you could essentially use data. I mean, use NFTs to track an entire logistics web, uh, like a warehouse, you know, full of thousands and thousands of products. You know, you can look at it as, as an NFT at this point as a JPEG, but for me in reality, it's a super QR code. It's a, it's a, it's a piece of data that can be used to record something on the chain undoubtedly if structured correctly. So I think once we get past the vanity stage of NFTs and we start to get to the real application side of it, it's going to be very exciting. We're always going to have programs that sell exclusivity and sell social status. But much like we see all these small startups around the world, NFTs can be used to track stock. It can be used to start and fund a business like us. We're using the funds from our mint to back whatever we build. You know, if we have a casino, there's our liquidity. If we have a token, there's our liquidity lock. Um, you know, and I think... Once we break through the vanity stage, we can we can start looking at NFTs as a data capturer, and that's what excites me because you can you can store so much data on there if you know what you're doing. And I, I just want to add to that that I totally agree with what you just said. Like, I just feel we're just at the tip of the iceberg, let's say, because so far, like what we can see, like the very the strongest power so far of NFTs is to create community and for people to bound together and it, it just creates something. You feel like it's family, friends, and that's it. 
But like, for example, what you're doing right now is an NFT is going to be a lottery ticket, but it's going to be the same thing in life. Like when you're going to buy a lottery ticket, it's not going to be a piece of paper. It's going to be on your phone. It's going to feel like it's like you said, it's like a very powerful QR code. And you're when you're going to go buy lottery tickets at uh, like at the shop and then you want to validate your ticket if you want, it's going to be on chain. But the thing is, when we get there and people don't realize that they're using blockchain technology, that's where it's going to be a big success because everything's going to be on chain. And like you said, like even like your driver's license is going to be an NFT, but you're going to have some hidden metadata that it tells you like when you get arrested by, by police, you're going to show uh, your NFT, which is going to be like uh, your driver license. And then there's going to be some hidden metadata that can only be shown to people you, you want to show. So I just feel like secrecy also is going to be a, play a big role in this. And I don't know, I feel like it's it's just going to evolve more and more. But it takes time for people to realize that NFTs are not only one uh, JPEG that you, you have attached to the NFT because you have a lot of data inside this NFT that can be leveraged. So I think it's just the start, to be honest. And there's a bunch of things that uh, can happen with NFTs. Geo, geofenced uh, NFTs are already being used, aren't there? I saw the kid uh, the other day that went to the concert with like the hoodie on, aye, and they just fucking like scanned the hoodie and bang, that's that he's fucking kick it into like the closed fucking rave thing. I'm like, oh, here we go. And uh, the other guy, what's he called? No, Armadillo, Barmadillo, the guy in the DMs, he's the one that's in uh, Texas doing the geo, the geofence stuff with NFTs, right? That's smart as fuck, that man. Proper use case. I mean, uh, uh, Fabian, I say you got your hand up, right? Uh, guys, listen, this like you're gonna put a house as an NFT. I think that's bullshit, right? Your house is not gonna be a fucking NFT on the blockchain, right? Let's just establish that. But your fucking hoodie with your fucking concert tickets in there, fucking will be, right? Sorry, Fabian, yeah. Um, yeah, just just to sort of compound on both of what you're saying, you know, do, now to get really complicated and really nerdy. The biggest issue civilization faces, which many of us don't actually know, is how do we continuously store the data we create, okay? Organizations, big organizations create thousands and thousands of megabytes of data, and it creates a huge gap where you have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to store that. But think about it again, back to to, to what the, 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 my friend was saying. I forgot your name there for a second. Sorry, but um, Mole, there we go. Um, you know, it, it could be a super barcode. You know, you could, you could store the historical data of a logistics pallet that's traveled the world for six years in less than a kilobyte. And, and that's also where I see a lot of, lot of value that people don't realize that you can store. You could store you know, a fuckload of cru crucial information in there at a kilobyte opposed to 10 megabytes. And I think that's another thing we all have to sort of consider. Well, bro, and, and, oh, sorry, yeah, Paul, I was just going to say, talking about data, though, and you, you, you're talking about, like, oh, it'll be 10 megabytes. In Thailand, the immigration service still demand everything by paper. It takes about, you're not going to, I'm not joking here, it takes about fucking 60 separate documents to be able to, to get a visa. The the Thai immigration system have just had to go and fucking hire this gigantic new warehouse just to store fucking paper. I mean, is that what's happening in 2023, Mo? We're having to store fucking paper in football-sized warehouses, like, and your man's talking about a few kilobits. Yeah, and, and to add to what you just said, I was going to, because, you know, you said, like, you cannot put a, a house in an NFT, but what if, like, I'm going to take an example, like, if you take your insurance, like your house insurance, home insurance as a paper, like it's still paper. It's still like, depending on the insurance company, it's, you can have it digitalized, but still this could be an NFT and you don't realize it and you store it on chain and then that's it. And all the paperwork that you just said, like when you do immigration and stuff like that, this could be on a chain too and stored as NFTs, but still the big thing with that is it needs some part of it needs to be hidden. Like, let's say you, you don't want to show your uh, social insurance number, uh, but you, you, like you need to prove that you have a card from, let's say, Thailand or other countries. So, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're getting there, but uh, it's going to be crazy when this happens. Like, imagine that you're just showing your card on your cell phone. It's actually on a blockchain, but people don't realize it. So it's just a matter of time.
So we're fucking early. That's what both years are saying, Fabian, right? We're fucking early as fuck, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's you know, if you if you look at, at conventional business, because I've got a master's degree in uh, business administration, you, you get something called the vanity phase, um, which is what I feel we're in. We're in a very vanity thing. It's cool to have NFTs. It's cool to be part of here. But NFTs are slowly starting to fall in the hands of people that want to use it as data storers and use it as uh, token unlocks or, or, or whatever it may be. I just... I think we, we got overexcited um, and a lot of people have gone, ah, it's done. But in, in reality, the actual application, like Mo also said, is, is still to come. It's going to come through innovation. How do I store 45 gigs of data on one thing of, of metadata? And I think that's when we're going to see real, real, uh, you know, innovation. And I, I agree with Mo. We'll know that we're there when we don't know that we're there. It's, it's a very, very good point because once the system is in, we shouldn't even really notice it. And that's when you're going to see the real power, in my opinion. Right. Well, I'm going to come back with something here then. Well, if that's the case, is Ethereum the answer? Is that what's going to be the real flag bearer 20, 30, 25, 30 years from now? Or do we need to be looking at these chains that are, you know, like... These, these fucking chains that are virtually like gasless, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like Ethereum can be a bit of a, a barrier point for, for quite a few people, right? Like who are coming into the industry. Like is Ethereum the answer, Fabian? Or, or are we are we looking at Cardano or, or other fucking ecosystems or what? Look, I'm, I, I unfortunately am going to be a little bit biased here. Um, because I, I've, I've been invested in Ethereum since it was classic and I, I own a validator myself. I have over a terabyte of, of processing power that was on, um, Ethereum itself. Do I think Ethereum is, is the be all in solution right now? No. Do I think it can be? Yes. Why? Because they are taking time. Right. Yes, Cardano is 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 fearless and it's effortless, but that has its issues. You know, you have to look back in history and realize that the conventional banking system took over 39 years to create, to figure out how to fractionalize investments, how to manage liquidities, how to pay loans, how to that, that took that took almost 40 years to figure out, you know, and I'm just grateful that Ethereum is taking us on the road. We we Built the initial blockchain, we built the second one, we validated it, and now we're moving towards sharding, which should solve a lot of our problems. So if Ethereum in the next three to five years can, can answer those questions, I think they have the momentum to be that person. The development decisions that happen in between that time is, is it. For now, I believe it. I, 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 yes, gas fees suck. And yes, there are a lot of barriers. But it's not without cause and consequence. Eh? You, don't, you don't see Ethereum just plummet out of eternity. You don't see blockchain issues. You know, they are, if you sit in the dev calls weekly, they, they're innovating every week. Eh? They've got MEV block issues. They've got a lot of stuff. And every week they're coming up with, okay, guys, this is the problem we've now hit. How do we get around it efficiently? Opposed to a lot of the chains in new untouched waters are saying they have the solution. And, you know, I'm, I'm actively seeing every week in the developed because of Ethereum that we don't actually have all the solutions and we can't expect everyone to just have them. So, yes, I, I, I believe if Ethereum can get sharding right in the next three years, they, they will keep their place as to where they are because they have 10 years of development behind them. But if they struggle and can't get over the sharding thing, someone will come along and take that seat. That's really interesting for many of our listeners uh, down there, because a lot of them I can see is down there. Your giga charts, by the way, Ambedo, Chris, yeah, and Chris, and a few others, Crash, Lolo's down there. Uh, these are kind of like Cosmos Maxis. So a lot of them uh, do or have believed, you know, that this is passing now, have believed in the app chain thesis, you know, where like you need a, like a specific chain, like just for NFTs, which we got over on Cosmos, yeah. We've got Stargaze, which is like basically just a pure NFT app chain. They're able to build some amazing shit. Actually, Mole's just been uh, actually Mole. Let's uh, the guys. I don't want to interrupt the crack, but uh, Mole, can you just quickly like tell Fabian and Dawn if that's all right? And the, the room who haven't heard this, 
What have you guys? Uh, I know it hasn't been signed off yet, but the code's gone over. What have you guys just done for Stargaze? Is that the open edition Minter, is it? Yeah, and uh, it's a good thing that you just brought up because I, I was speaking with uh, John, the guy at Stargaze, and uh, basically I was working on this. I think he, he really wants to push it uh, to governance today. So I have a few fix to make. I think there's one or two things left, but it should be done. But uh, I don't know uh, if Donald or Fabian knows about an open edition Minter, but it's basically uh, a Minter that's going to mint one NFT. It's going to be the same NFT. It's, you, sometimes it's called badges. So you have, let's say, you de- you decide on the price and you decide on how long it's going to take. So if you decide on one specific uh, NFT, that's going to be minted by everyone. And then you have a time limit, but there's no limit on the number of NFTs minted. So yeah, I think it uh, it should be merged uh, uh, today the this pull request. So very excited to make this happen. You know, Fabian, I'm not gonna. I know it's about wreck raffle tonight, but uh, you know we have a bit of crack on. Uh, you're not gonna believe it, you know, Fabian. In like a few weeks, these guys built a. Uh, or, okay, it's on a on a chain that like, you know, doesn't have the highest volume of users, but there's a decent like usage over there, and it's, it's a well known chain in there on IBC. You know, I'm not talking about some of the theory or anything, right? But the guys have just built a marketplace, uh, Fabian, and it is fucking wicked. You can go and have a look at it, actually, like dude. It, yeah, send uh, send me some links, dude. Oh, dude, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Mol, Mol will tell you exactly what it is, dude. It's it's, it's a weird one because it's like Emporium, but it's like because uh, it's on the dog chain, right? It's it's literally a meme chain, a dog chain, right? But it's like a, it's dude. You you want to see? It's a slick interface. Uh, I'll I'll drop you uh, a link anywhere. But Emporium's been there. Uh, Mol, what was it like building a fucking full marketplace, like from the better to like the alphabet of the better? Yeah, it was it was pretty fun, man, to be honest. And like, for example, uh, when we started building it, we started from our own ideas and then decided to make things uh, our way, let's say. And then we were like, okay, well, we could look at how people actually make it. And then we noticed that it was very similar. But one thing that we did a bit differently is that we're trying to gamify the uh the marketplace so let's say every time you're trading nfts for each one usdc uh volume you're getting a specific token and with this token you are able to like decrease your uh fees when you trade nfts and then you can improve your profile on the platform and stuff like that so i think this is also one way of making things like more fun on blockchains like when you're able to gamify these things like it's the same thing for rec raffles. Like you're buying NFTs, but at the same time you're gamifying it because it's a lottery ticket at the same time. So it's and I, I also want to add like to uh, what Fabian said a bit earlier. Like it takes time, man. I feel like it, we're in Cosmos and we're building stuff, but like Ethereum has like much more knowledge than Cosmos, I think, because they've been there for a while. They're still fixing issues. Yeah, gas is expensive, but like. It's it's they're still exploring what can be done and what cannot be done and it takes a lot of time and just to to just go back to the banking system that he discussed it took a lot of time to create this banking system but I don't know if everyone knows but it's still using this very old code which is called COBOL and it's it's still yeah working. It COBOL takes time. bro yeah so it takes time for things to happen. Yeah, and I just, you know, just to sort of, again, push out, we keep pushing each other's points on, just to push what Mal's saying, you know, it's, it's for me, it's comforting because I, I can see huge innovation in Ethereum's court, right? They, they, a lot of the concepts any chain is copying was first done by them. Don't, never, ever forget that. They, they were the guinea pig that, that created a lot of these concepts. And, you know, much like uh, Mole said with the banking system, they're making progress. They're trying. Um, and they're not saying there's, a, there's an end solution, which I think is a lot better than telling me, okay, cool, I've figured out this new technology right here and right now. So uh, I put uh, in the nest, uh, whoever does the most creative tweet about Rec Raffle, We'll uh, win a ticket. So, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can I? Can I just give a shout out down in the audience? Absolutely. Ambido, Ambido, you you saw the challenge, your yeah, man. I know he can do it, guys. I, I only mention Ambido because he's like the greatest fucking artist in the world, in my opinion. Like, he keeps knocking out these like ups, like he, I kind of get over it. This kid just every day I wake up and I start fucking looking at his drums and start laughing my head off. He's about to drop some amazing shit, but Ambedo, 
the most creative tweet there's the gauntlet thrown down guys out uh, if you don't mind can you indulge me for one second one second let's uh, do it Fabian some of the fucking smartest crypto guys I've spoken to uh, 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 like uh, just really intelligent uh, from South Africa and I know your adoption is crazy down there like what is it about why South Africans are so tuned in and in sync with fucking crypto like in Thailand fuck dude you're like the rarity but like literally like all my South African mates I've got a few over here but a lot of people I speak to online it's like, it, 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 and I do know about like the Orange Sean and Bitch Shack, and I listen to some of the cool kids, right, who do the podcast and stuff. Bro, why is it so like insanely popular and the adoption so like good and you're so knowledgeable down there? Is it your government that's such a piece of shit? No, so so actually, me and Don, we we have this rolling joke all the time where I tell him I don't want to work with Americans, and obviously Don is American, and the the reason I'm bringing this on is it it, it shows a lot of fruition between the difference of continents. Um, you must understand understand South Africa is a very brutal place to live. It's competitive. It's you know, especially where I live in the business capital, every person is looking to make money all day, every day. Like this economy doesn't function without corruption and bribes. If you do a deal, there's a cost of it. Um, and a lot of lot of South Africans, because the government is is so shit, one, our tax laws are a joke. Like they don't even know how to tax people on crypto. Um, so, you know, I've been off ramping for years now and my tax guy still can't tell me how to do it. So that that's one huge element. But I think secondly, it's a hunger thing. Um, you know, our, our country is currently going through a little bit of a collapse. We don't have power for about 12 hours a day. Um, and you must realize our South Africans are looking at the international crypto market that works in dollars. So for us, it's times 19. You know, you, you flip an, an NFT worth 0, 0,05. It's nothing to you. You know, it's 80, 90 dollars. 90 dollars to me is close to 4,000 Rand. Just to put it in perspective, my petrol a month is 4,000 Rand. A month. Wow, to go, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, just to put that in perspective. So for us, we, we do two flips, dude, and we can pay our rent. Um, you know, and because we are so hungry for money and opportunity here, crypto is a great one for us because it, it, it's created an environment where we can come in and be knowledgeable gain a little bit of information. The exchange rate works in our favor. The tax laws are loose. Um, and I think it would, it would, you know, come down to that. We don't have much opportunity left here, dude. So any opportunity left or right to make money, a South African is, is there, bro. And I'm sure Don has, has really faltered over the last couple of months. Cause I am an exceptionally intense, uh, business partner and friend, and and that comes from this environment. It's extremely competitive. Um, dude, very, we, very we aggressive. Are, dude, we are. I, I tell my student. I mean, I'm a teacher. Me, uh, I send kids around the world. You wouldn't believe it, but uh, like I tell, I, I always say, like, like my kid, I call them kids, but they're fucking 18 years old, right? And they're trying to go to like wherever medical school they want to go to. Blah blah. And they're always just like, oh, you know, but I've got this like, pro and I'm like, you're just a product of your environment. Once you accept that, then you've got no worries. You can like really get on with your fucking life. That is one of the most important like lessons you can ever fucking have, baby. And is that once you accept that you're a product of your environment, then you can go and be the best fucking version of yourself, right? Yeah, and it's 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 you know I agree with that, and our environment is it's it's brutal out here. You know we don't have power for twelve hours of the day. Doing work is hard. You know e every single person is just looking for a small bit of break. And just to be bluntly honest, the exchange rate is beautiful to us. We are competitive, and we're not afraid to work. And that's why I think a lot of us have been successful because here. You know, a 16 to 17 hour workday is pretty normal, dude. It's pretty standard shit where, you know, in America or any other first world country, you know, eight hours, if you there longer than hour, eight hours, you get overtime. Yeah, it's like, yo, dude, we haven't had power for eight hours. I need to catch up now. Um, so it is a little bit of a different environment. I agree. I agree. You know what, though, dude? You wouldn't give it up. Yeah, crypto. You wouldn't give up crypto for the world. Like it, it, once you've gone into crypto, you can never go back, right? No, nah, dude, it's it's like a virus. You know, I've had a, a few stages where 
you know, before we, we launched Rec, I was going in and out of communities and I wasn't enjoying it and whatever. And I, I keep pulling myself back, man. It's, it's lovely to have intelligent conversations with individuals across the world. It's also interesting to see how different aspects affect people's perspectives and economies. A crypto, I feel, allows you to see a world perspective through a financial magnifying glass, um, which is exceptionally powerful. Oh, I like this guy, mind, Don. First time I spoke to you, man. Aye, he's fucking good in him all. I don't know what you think, like Molly's all right, aye. Uh, Fabian, you have to come back, you know, on your alt account or something. Aye, Is of it... course. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome back. Any? Oh, dude, do you want to come in for a Friday show? We'd have a fucking right scream. Come in on your alt account, you know. When you're not rep- representing, all right. <laughs> uh, I'll be there, but no problem. <laughs> Moll, I'll tell you, man, they had to fucking, they had to fucking eject, eject our little sperms into the ecosystem to go and do like what we do, because like they have to be prim and proper and we know what it's like on an official account. Right, Moll? <laughs> yeah, my, my actual IRL account's a little bit more free, um, but over here we got to keep it clean, you know? Oh, well, dude, honestly, come on on a Friday show uh, where we just chat the shit at like completely different. You'll have a right back. Uh, in a couple of weeks, right, when you've done your mint and you're a blah, blah, come on and we'll chat some proper fucking shit, right? Aye, I got a few of my friends on. Uh, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. You got me, hook, line and sinker. Mall, uh, I mean, dudes, we'd had a, an, an hour in the calendar, but Mall, in regards to the actual, like, raffle, the mechanics, the, I, I know Mall's been having a look, uh, guys. I asked him, like, a few days ago. Uh, Moll, is there anything like any any feedback, any comments, any things you've seen, or or what? Or do you just wish the guys the best, or what? Yeah, wishing them the best. And to be honest, and uh, like we said it from from the start, it, I feel like it's so I don't know. I'd say refreshing. It's so fun to speak with projects where you feel it's organic, and people are, are just not paying everyone to get the attention they need i feel like for sure it's going to take some time to go organic and get the attention but i feel like it's it's a longer lasting relationship with your community when you're doing it organically otherwise people are i don't know maybe they're going to be moon boy let's say but i mean you need that type of energy too but uh, i don't know i, I feel like uh, what i've heard in the last hour I, I really like what you guys are building and uh wishing you all the best and for sure gonna grab a ticket <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having us on. It's uh, really, really good for the exposure and everything. Uh, but guys, whoever gets the most creative tweet out, remember, we do that now. I'm Beto. I'm Beto. I'm telling you, if you put a fucking piece of artwork together, dude, quickly, you're like, you're going to win this, dude. You've, you've, you've heard the crack. He's got the, mad, he's got the maddest ideas, I'll tell you what. I, how do I feel about Ambido? I, I like a guy's art. He's a rack of them artist. He's done all our artwork, right? Frasco does all the animated stuff, the gifts. Uh, but Ambido is like the blood that fucking powers our arteries, right? And I'm telling you, I, 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 he's just like the little brother that I never had. Like I had a little brother, but but I never really had him. And now I've got a little brother and I'm keeping him and he's lovely. And that's that's how I feel about Ambido. So, dude. Go on, we, go on, Ambedo. You're not going to win it just because of me, but, like, I don't know, you can, like, kill this dude. Anyway, I wish us all the best for the Mint. Uh, I'll be... Actually, wait a minute. What Can you just give us a time, uh, guys? Because you're in different time zones. So, me, I'm in Bangkok. What time, uh, EFT or whatever? Or you, TC? So, so, me and Donna actually just jumping into a strategy meeting straight after this. Um, and we're going to just discuss the actual time because <laughs> as as you found out trying to schedule this, I'm on South African standard and then Don is on, I don't know, what, Washington time, hey? East Coast. Bro, bro, can I tell you a story? How funny is this? Don's done with that. Don, I'm going to tell this story quickly at the end. Don's done that many spaces for that many hours. I mean, he's second on all time list of like the length of unbroken spaces. I, and we're like fourth or something with 35 hours. This one's got 40 odd. Anyway, he's lost like track of time and space in like, you know, he's like, uh, what's your man, Dr. Strange? You know, when he gets like into the dust and he's like, there's only one way, you know, one in 798 million or something. And then Don the other day is like, uh, dude, we can't do the space. It's 4 a.m. I'm like, 
Donnie's in South Africa. You, you know the planet goes like left to right, bro. You know, like which way we're going or not? Like Don's like, what are you fuck talking about, man? He's purely spaced out. He's like thinking that like South Africa's located roughly around uh, a little bit like uh, what west of Hawaii, Don. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Don knows what I mean. You know, like, hey, we're, we're, no, we're dude, it's, I agree. Though. It's like, you know, when we were talking about scheduling it, um, I'm sure you remember my message where I was like, yo, dude, I work on standard time. Don works on whatever time he's awake. <laughs> I was like, guaranteed the man will be awake. <laughs> oh, he's a legend. He's a legend. I'll tell you what, there's many a time I've got up. I might have been hanging. I might be able to like go and go to work, or not go to work, like but do some paperwork, and I'm like stick these cunts on in the background and like yeah. But it was hilarious. I was trying to say it, Don, not like this time, Don. Like so, it was like what four four p.m. for you when we kicked off, I think. And he's like, dude, it's four a.m. and I'm like, Don, but we're going the other way. <laughs> We oh. fuck up all the time, dude. Me and Don <laughs> schedule meetings like almost every week, and there's always a me- like we don't even get touched anymore. There's always a message like "fuck, bro, I fucked up the time zone again." <laughs> yeah, because Twitter will show like like one time zone for everybody, and then uh, yeah, we'll completely miss. We don't yeah, know you speaking because I can't hear you, but oh, uh, you want to drop them down and bring it back up? Don, I think yeah, I can hear you both. So, Don, I think you're getting rugged. I can hear you both. So, if he can't hear you, I think you might need to just jump out and jump back straight in, mate. Yeah. All right. Hey, about it. Uh, honestly, I'm gonna say this. What a what a this is like our second one a night. Uh, our second space. Yeah. Uh, the guy, the team are not really happy with me, actually, guys. I mean, Rick Raffle, first of all, been trying to get you on for weeks. Not you. I scheduled another one in earlier tonight, but it had to be done. Like, we have to be fluid. We have to keep moving. I'm sure Finn's going to come in on the recording and make some commentary. Uh, as a Spaces team, what we're trying to do with the NFTs and the POAs, the POA NFTs, et cetera, right? The wraps, you know, the EP's coming soon. The Red Clips is coming soon. Like, if we can't innovate and be liquid and try to, like, accommodate people when they're available, then we're not doing our fucking job. Are you listening, Finn? Todd Spaces, you little pleb cunt. I see you down there listening. All right. You're recording it. You're going to do all the edits. You probably cut this out. All right. Listen here. Calm down. Calm down. All right. First of all, I'm not going to cut this out. I mean, I am, but I'm not going to, like leave anything out it's gonna resume right where you left off because i have a little thing called integrity that's right i don't make editorial edits frankly i wouldn't want to be in a position to have to judge such thing i'm out here raw dogging it trying to capture the audio like steve Irwin just sneaking in the bushes with a microphone just waiting for you to say something fucking stupid and then i pounce i'm like crockley i'm gonna jam my thumb in it all right let's get back to the show i've I've been following you finn you always cut my shit out when i give you shit right so i'll leave you a little easter egg son just like what you live me all right anyway all right you want some director's commentary some producer's commentary all right check this shit out so Robo in my DMs, right? You know how he likes to post screenshots from the fucking the private GCs. Well, here's here's a fucking audio screenshot for you fucking assholes. Today, 1021 AM, he said, find my real Easter egg tonight on Wrecked, and I'll send you a rack. Lovely little comfort ball. As I know you're off recording other shit, you edit shit, but you listen to our shit. (laughs) What? (laughs) Try making every spaces a family outing. God, I hate when they say spaces. It's a space. It's only spaces if you do more than one. Like you did today, you fucker. So, I sent him... (laughs) I sent him a, 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 an audio clip. It's actually ret clip number 417 now. And, I, and then I sent him the Terra Spaces secret address, and I said, you can send that rack here with the handshake emoji. <laughs> That's right. 
Checkmate, motherfucker. Wrecked and done. You'll probably not get that. But if you listen back to the shows like some of the others, you fucking will. We keep like leaving little Easter eggs and playing around with one another. But Finn does our editing. This will be up with uh, very soon in a couple hours with a bang and like intro track, a bang and outro track, uh, a good editing. Uh, yeah, I can't fucking wait. Wrecked. Honestly, right. You have to come on Rack FM. And, and there's only me tonight. Me other fucking court. The, the normal people have abandoned me. Bruce has offered his girlfriend. B bands has fucking not talking to me. I don't know what's going on. I need joking, darling. And I'm only up alone. And I'll tell you what, you passed the sniff test like with spades tonight. Amazing. <laughs> oh, can't wait, dude. Can't wait, uh, Fabian. Yeah, let's see this. Let's see how. I'll tell you what, let's see your mint go mad. Friday, we're going to be talking about you. Yeah, I wish us all the best, fellas. Mind. Hey, Th- wanna, thanks. Uh, sorry, sorry. If you want to write a rap about uh, Rec Raffle, we'll give you, we'll give you a ticket. That's for you. Uh... <laughs> oh, Finn, Finn's. I tell you what, Finn's working on the fucking second EP right now. I think the first one's nearly finished. This kid, mind, and he's he's jibes at the industry. I mean, who else is doing this? Like, I, I, I know Rec Raffle and Fabian, I'm sorry, you didn't know what we're talking about, but Finn, me mate, eh? part of the Rack FM crew, he's, there. He's, he's on the official account, his terror space is there, he's like the editor, archiver, but really, like, Finn, uh, and uh, Ambedo's artwork, back the wrap up, but fucking, this kid's on fire. I mean, Mole, quickly before we finish, because the lads are having fun, What are, what Finn's raps have been insane lately, right? Yeah, man, I think it's uh, it's a piece of art, to be honest. Like, he, how he raps, man, it's kind of crazy, man. So the first one, Fabian, was called Imagine the Smell. And we actually own the domain, uh, imaginethesmell.org. So knee shit, Fabian. Like, while you're chatting, Russell, after you finish, you can just go, imaginethesmell.org, and you're going to, like, find stinky raccoons, and you're going to be like, what the fuck is this shit? Oh, go check it out, dude. That's fucking dope, though. That organic, like, community vibes and tracks. I love it, dude. That's why I was so keen when you guys sent us a DM. Um, Because I know you guys are also on the same ground as us, doing it organically and step by step with a little bit of fun. Bro, we've got, we've got, like, we've got rackfm.org, Rack TV. Oh, Rack TV is coming next. Oh, you can't imagine the smell. We're going to come on your screens. And trust me, I mean, I'm a fucking proper raccoon in real life. I've got like seven teeth and big dogs and loads of weapons. Like, you're not, you're not even prepared for what I'm going to be on your screen. Enjoy Dawn and enjoy Joe while you can, because I'm going to give you fucking nightmares, you little cunts. But never mind, that's another conversation. Fabian, you know, listen, you've got, if you didn't have, like, dude, all we ask for is a bit of crack. Like, this is the, the situation, Fabian, you know. Imagine if we DM you in, do you want to come on the, and you go like, oh, uh, yeah, can we have a, like a 45 minute uh, pre-screening interview before like we uh, come on your show? What do you think we're going to be like? We're going to be like, dude, <laughs> I'm, right, I'm not even going to reply. Like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. It's all chilled vibes, bro. As long as, uh, you know, the communities, that's why we were so keen, dude, because we, you know, we obviously cross pollinate with you guys as well. And we have a similar vibe. So I enjoyed the whole, the whole way. Thank you again, bro, for actually having us up here today. I appreciate it. And thanks, nah. Mal, dude. Very nice to chat to another developer. Yeah, that was awesome having you, Mal. Yeah, it was really fun. Good, yeah, you brought a lot, a lot of good insight because uh, you've you've built something very similar. So, yeah, I, I'm uh, honored to have you here, guys. Can I can I just give a shout out, please? Though he just jumped in, and I just want you to like scroll down if you're looking on the twi- like if you can see the the people, the part of the attendees, Zapdos. Zapdos, you little motherfucker. I see you, you've been building some front end, have you? You've just come in, you little morpho. Uh, this is the other half to the... And you can look at his profile. I mean, look at this, like American psycho, blood fucking axe killing motherfucker in some suit. I don't know what's going on with this. Do you know American psycho? He's, he's the, that's his PFP, is the American psycho of the Rack FM crew. I don't know how Moll feels about that. But well, that's the other half. That's the yin and the yang, and uh, we love them daily. And yeah, man, I'm really 
fucking ex because you're such nice people. It's like, it's not that I'm a big like F Maxi or I'm a fucking Don fanboy or, or this or that. It's just because you're nice fucking guy. Like, it's just really nice to speak to, knowledgeable, not fucking plebs, ni pretense, like, you can have banter. You know when, the, 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 you know, the serious questions are like, being that's so serious stuff. You know, and the segues need to be done. Like, you guys can come on any space and fucking hold your own. So, from the Rack FM official account to the two of you motherfuckers, three of you motherfuckers, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, right? You know, it's actually funny. Um, you, you and Fabian both did the same or said the same thing coming on to uh, my spaces. Like when you when you first joined, you 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 came to speaker and said, uh, "You have to be smart. You have to be smart to speak in here." Both both of you said that, which is funny. No, no, no. We've Mol's, Mol's going to tell you something here, and this is going to be real. I mean, this might sound bad. Some people have, and I've changed rooms, guys. I've come in my little smoking room, by the way, which I love to like live in all night. <laughs> I live in Thailand; it's illegal. Uh, what we've always said is, listen, like you don't have to be the most educated, to, like come and chill out with us, right? That's what we're trying to do. Just don't be fucking dumb, like. It's really hard to fuck with, and this this might sound bad. It's really hard to deal with dumb people. Do you know what I mean? Like proper thick people. Like when I was growing up, right? No, sorry, no, I've had a few beers now. When I was growing up, though, Mickey Flanagan, like like the comedian, said the same thing. Like dumb fucking thick people. You would keep them in like the house. You would keep them indoors. You know, yeah, you, you'd put them in the room playing on a fucking game or something, and you'd be like, right, bye, bye, like. You know what I'm talking about, these proper dumb. But now, oh, they come on Twitter, they get into crypto, oh, they've got a voice, and you're like, bro, what the fuck? What life have you lived where, like, this is your, like, a perspective on life? That's what I'm talking about, is that we're different, Fabian, right? Fabian fucking knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, dude, it's, 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 uh, not all opinions are valid, and not all words should be heard, bro. Um, <laughs> I'm a strong Ooh. believer in that. <laughs> if you don't know something, rather just say you don't know, dude. It's like much easier than someone can explain it to you. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm with you there, brother. <laughs> I, I would agree with you in crypto, but in my job, if I was to say that to my boss, he would fucking sack me. And my boss like says something to me, I'm gonna go. Oh, I haven't got that information with me right now. But if you give me about 15 minutes when I get back to my desk, I'll have that straight over to you in an email. Otherwise, he's gonna say, "Get the fuck out of my office, pleb." But that's like Web Two. <laughs> that's no fucking Web Three. No, no, I'm gonna wind it down, guys. Uh, I want to give a shout out to some people who's come in. Uh, Salturian. I uh, want to give a bit of a shout out there. He's just dropped in. I love this guy. Very clever, good DJ, knows his shit. Taboo uh, has just dropped in. I'm going to give a bit of free alpha. Uh, Pre-Taboo launch, so like about, like uh, hopefully about 48 hours before the Taboo wallet launch, we should be doing their pre-launch party. A little bit like what we're doing with uh, Rec Raffle tonight. Fingers crossed that goes well. Uh, Chris on Juno Beds, uh, in the audience, and especially Zapdos, I see Mr. Ice is down there, Crash, some really cool people. Crypto Crank's been in from the start. Guys, I don't want to miss anybody, but a very, and I mean very fucking special thank you. First of all, to Finn, to record this, the edit will be fucking so good tonight. And now he's going to go all in on the edit. But to, to Don and to Fabian, right, right, right? I'm not going to say a thank you for the spaces. I'm going to say thank you for doing something right. Yeah, just trying to fucking, yeah, we we re we understand that. We recognize that. We can smell that. We're raccoons, man. We're in the trash, man. We When we fucking make good people, we we know good people immediately. And Moll will tell you, after what we've been through, we don't trust anybody. But tonight, Moll, Moll, any last words? We're going to sign off, dude. Yeah, for sure. One last word. I just want to say thanks for hosting these spaces. Always fun to come on. And I don't know, man. I, I really like the vibe tonight. It's uh, speaking with different people from different uh, ecosystems. And then you realize that what you're building, there's other people building something similar. 
and they have the same vision to like do it organically and have a community i don't know man it, it feels like i don't know a special feeling let's say so just want to say uh thanks to don fabian and robo so yeah that will be it for me okay is more fabian anything before we sign out yeah i just want to say thanks again for the space uh super super cool hanging out uh with all of you and also very like refreshing was it, was it, was it, was it what you expecting was it what what you expecting or not no i was i was expecting a good vibe but it was just it was also cool to just decompress a little bit uh you know we've been uh, stuck in this little bit of a bubble with rect you know developing and working on all the artworks and everything so it's cool to see a different perspective and hear that um we're sort of doing a good job because you know we've been living in this bubble so yeah thanks again for for all the cool words the chats the support um and yeah we'll see you guys on minting thank you again Oh, he's, fucking, he's fucking golden, isn't he? I'll tell you what, Don. First time I've spoke to you, man, tonight. He's fucking golden, isn't he? Proper gold dust. I love him. Love him the bit, side. Mate, you can come to my house anytime. My dog would not eat you. And that that's the fucking greatest honour you'll ever get. Like, telling you. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> uh, good, luck, good luck with the mint. And thank you, guys. We've done two spaces tonight. We're signing out. We hope we've entertained you. Come back tomorrow. We have Jared. It's going to be hilarious. I've got dengue fever. Rack FM ghosted Jared. Like this, like tomorrow is going to be the beginning. Anyway, the beginning of the show is going to be hilarious. 8 a.m. EST. And then Friday. I mean, wait a minute. Very quickly, Moll, I've got Liam. I've got Liam coming on. You know who I mean? Liam, right? Moll, can you believe Moll? Oh, he's gone. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. And when is this happening? So I was looking at something. Friday. Right, dude. Oh, can you yeah. believe it? I- I have to listen to this then. <laughs> Can you believe I've pulled off like the interview of the year? I've been telling them in the group, like I've got the interview of the year and they're like, bullshit, bullshit. And then I pull Liam out. Oh my God. Friday, <clears throat> 8 a.m. EST. If you who, jump who, in your right. Who, who is it? Uh, like, what do they do? Uh, he, well, it's Liam Connor, which is confident in crypto. So he's the guy that's been doing all the Cosmos e- uh, ecosystem, like airdrop vi- YouTube videos for like a long time. But he's just stopped and jumped onto Twitter Spaces like full time, and he's doing some background work with Omniflix with gaming. But like he's been like CEOs, like I don't know. Well, well, dude, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna wait. You've got to come on Friday. I'm telling you, this is going to be one of the best shows of the year. I'm not shitting you. You'll not laugh as much as you will on Friday. I've got so much planned. Anyway, I'm going to shut the fuck up. I'm going to thank the guests uh, and our fucking Dev Mall. He's not a guest. He's a brother from another mother. Uh, and I hope, guys, you can go back and listen to replay and you score can have a laugh because you're all fucking diamonds. Right? And I wish us all the best in the world. God bless. Good night. Take care. And like Dao- there's this principle in like Taoism where it's just like the more you fight something, the more like the opposite of what you want, like just inevitably it kind of starts to happen. There's this principle in like Dao- 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 Taoism where it's just like the more you fight something, the more like the opposite of what you want, inevitably it kind of starts to happen. Tripping on the bird app, listening to nerds flap, wondering why the fuck my timeline's so cursed. It's like everybody's holding heavy bags in Web3. That's why they can't fly, they just drowning in the bird bath, fishing for some dry powder. Watch how we ignite the tower, blowing up their bank accounts, forgetting how to fight the power. Y'all don't even realize how deep this shit goes. They preach an open sauce, but don't listen to the code, and now it's mutiny, community, uprise. There's no more humility, futility, plus size. Motherfuckers leaking from the wrench down to the bare metal. Which side of the line you bleeding out on when the dust settles? Motherfucking west side shit, needle and noose, sticking with my armory, yam, beta. And Bruce, repping psychedelic artistry, believe in the truth. Like these motherfuckers even need a reason to sue. GM fam, is it really worth all the effort? Is it really worth all the fighting? Is it really worth all the drama? And the answer, I think, is a clear no. We started using Zoom, now we finna zoom out Teaching all these plebidites what this game's really all about Little baby bitches when they choose to have fit 
bits All you're left with is kibble when you lose all them bits And that kibble's just sawdust The shit is all rust Not a great look, you're what we call all nuts And I for one did not see that coming Cracking open books, yo, that's a lot of money Meanwhile over here rewiring features More critical thinking, huh? Less knee jerk, more evolution Less shit coin preachers Pretending to be teachers Y'all just predatory leeches I mean please, just look at the track record A bunch of VC rap fucks Sucking up the cheddar The recipe is two steps Rinse and repeat Now we all in your butts And we bring in receipts GM fam, have a seat If you're listening to this My, my plea to you, you would be like don't have, don't, don't have to take a side on it Just say like Is it really, is it really worth this war of attrition? It might cost, it might cost us, us a lot more, more than, than what can be gained game. by like fighting this to the better end. And sometimes it's better to just like move on. Ten spaces.